What's going on, Sumolings? Thank you so much for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. As you know, I am Lindsay, and today I am joined by the team over at Odium. Odium offers a complete solution for launching a subscription video service with branded apps on every platform. It is available on AppSumo right now, starting at $99 for a lifetime deal. But before we dive into this like super unique and awesome product, I'm really excited for this one today. Uh, before we dive into this, I just want to tell y'all the same things I always tell y'all. Uh, one, if you want to tell us a little bit about your use case, if you want to tell us a little bit about your business, yourself, where you're calling from, we love to hear that over in the chat room. If you have any questions about the tool, the deal, how to get set up, go ahead and leave those questions in the Q&A box down below this video. We're going to be circling back to those questions at the end of the walkthrough, but we also have Courtney here uh, who is going to be answering questions as well. And then uh, the last thing is that there will be a replay of this. So if you would like to watch this again, you can. Um, it's uh, always going to be available. All right, uh, that's it for me. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? I'm great, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. I'm gonna go ahead and pass this over to you for the walkthrough. Let me know when you're ready for the Q&A. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, thanks everyone. I've got uh, sort of three sections today. I'm gonna to start by giving you a little bit of an overview of what Odium is. Um, I love that Lindsay used the word unique because it is a unique platform. Um, and so we're gonna do our best to explain the process of how you get up and running on our platform. There's multiple sort of phases to it. I don't want it to be daunting, but it is uh, bear some explaining. We'll do a demo walkthrough of the tool, um, how you use our dashboard, and then I'll come back to um, a few sort of specific details that I think might be of interest. But first, let me start by just saying Odium, um, we're, we're a bit unique as a team as well. Odium is built by the team at JLoop. You can look us up at jloop.com. And uh, we are in 2021, we will celebrate 20 years in business as a digital agency building software, websites, mobile apps, um, heavy on user experience and design um, for a variety of clients. We work heavily with IBM. We have clients in retail, yogurt land, uh, lots in real estate, kind of like every industry. And we've been building Odium ourselves for the last four years. So we're not a typical startup. We are all about building a sustainable business to be here for the long haul. Um, we've been in video for uh, most of our existence. We've had video as part of our um, development efforts at, at JLoop for all this time. So we're very familiar with the space, obviously. Um, we also have that background in entertainment and some of the other pieces that make Odium a great uh, tool that we've been excited to build and bring to market. Um, so we're excited to share it with you today. All right, I'm going to jump in and start with a few slides, but I won't take long. Just going to try to explain sort of what is Odium all about. Okay, so with Odium, when we, when we get you launched, you're going to end up with your own branded website and a complete set of branded apps to launch your very own subscription video service. That is what we are all about, subscription video service, just like Netflix as an example. You pay a monthly subscription fee, you've got access to their entire content library on any platform that you choose. That's what the platform is all about. Everything begins here in the Odium dashboard. This is our web-based console that you control day and night whenever you want to what content is in your subscription video service. So everything goes into the dashboard and then it is pushed out to the apps. So no matter where your audience is subscribing, what device they're using, they're consuming the content in the apps. So you manage the dashboard and then your subscribers see through the apps and the website powered by Odium. So let's talk about the dashboard. Basically, when you want to get up and running on Odium, you need to populate the dashboard. You need to build your subscription system in our dashboard. Once you've done that, we take over. This is just a, a high level look at the process, right? So you populate the dashboard. And then in, once you're ready for us, we're going to take over and we are going to manually build your apps. Of course, they're sitting in our source code ready to go, but we have to customize them for you we submit them to your Apple developer accounts, and then we're off and running. 
at the end of it, what you end up with is your own brand on all these platforms, TV, computer, tablet, phone natively. So let's talk about what it takes to populate the dashboard. There's three big activities that are gonna take place. The first is you're gonna add your content. The second is you're gonna brand your channel. And the third is preparing for distribution. I'll jump in a little bit of detail here on what the activities are in each of these sections. So when you add your content, you're doing things like uploading video content, creating playlists. Playlists are just a container structure to hold a set of videos. And then you're gonna add resources. This is an optional feature. You can add a PDF, you can add external links as uh, resource links that are connected to the content in your, uh, in your subscription service. So branding your channel, the next big part of it is uploading logos and images, things like that, choosing colors, adding your marketing messages, basically configuring how the thing looks and the appearance and the content inside. And you're gonna prepare for distribution. So you're gonna set up some uh, subscription pricing plans. You're gonna opt in to each of the app stores that you would like to use. Now, as part of your, your AppSumo uh, code, you get access to our entire platform. So you can launch on every, on every one of the developer platforms we support, but you don't have to. If you see no reason to have a Roku app, you can opt out of that. And then you're gonna choose your Odium plan, but you won't do that because your plan will already be chosen for you as the AppSumo Pro plan. Let's talk for a minute about this one. I just wanna dive into it. Preparing for distribution does involve all of these app stores, developer accounts in each of these. If you don't already have developer accounts, this can be one of the most time consuming things that you need to do. So we have detailed instructions on our help desk, help.odium.io for each of these, how to sign up and then how to invite ODM to uh, access your account. We publish under your name. So because these are time consuming, I call it out now because if you haven't gotten started and you wanna get launched quickly, this is an important piece to get started on right away. So the process of the apps is we build them when we get going. And that is a manual process for our team to build your apps. We submit them to the app stores. Every app store has a review cycle. Um, as you know, of course, the most notorious is Apple and it is worthy of discussion and consideration. We'll talk a little bit about that. They, uh, there can be challenges with Apple. Um, and then we get through approval. So we manage all that for you. We will submit the apps. We will manage. Sometimes things get rejected. Um, and then we, right, we handle it, basically. <laughs> and we get you approved. And bingo, you get launched. And you're live on all the platforms. Just one little call out, we are available always. This is a, kind of the unique value proposition of what we are. We aren't just a software, we're a whole team and we are dedicated to helping you be successful. So we use Intercom, we're in the corner all the time. This is that team I was mentioning, we're standing by ready to help you. All right, demo time. Let's jump into the tool. I'm gonna switch my sharing over to Chrome. All right, so we are taking a look here at basically what you will see when you arrive in the tool for the first time as a Sumoling. Um, your channel will just be given a generic name based on actually your AppSumo code. Um, so you'll see that up here in the corner, channel random number. <laughs> um, for those of you who might purchase multiple codes, as you activate them, you will actually have a little switcher up here to switch between publishing accounts. Each, each account is entirely unique. Um, you could launch a fitness channel and then turn around and launch a magician's channel and then turn around and launch a coaching and consulting channel. All of them are completely separate, completely uniquely branded. Um, so you can switch up here. When we have this launch checklist and the purpose of the launch checklist is to help you not get overwhelmed <laughs> and to move through the steps of uh, preparing and populating the dashboard and preparing for launch in a methodical way. So it matches what I just told you. There's the three big steps, right? The first is adding your video content. The second is building your brand. And the third is preparing for distribution. We've broken that down over here into 10 separate tasks. 
Um, and these are links that will take you directly into sections of our dashboard um, so that you can complete that activity. And as you move through the checklist, you'll get green check marks down the list. And when you're done, you'll basically be ready to request launch. We'll talk more about that later. A couple of things to point out, you'll see these walkthrough buttons and they exist throughout the dashboard. Um, and you can, they are, they're contextually uh, relevant. So we can help you walk through a step-by-step -step of explaining how to use that part of the dashboard as you go. The checklist actually has these unique elements here um, that will sort of talk you through what is the concept here and how, how do you move through this section of the dashboard. So I'm gonna leave the checklist alone for a minute and we'll, we'll come, we'll look at a few other um, publishers and see one that's sort of in process. While you're in pre-launch mode, you have access to the checklist always at the top in this banner. It's gonna tell me I have completed zero of my 10 steps and I can just hit uh, continue, which will jump me over here to the checklist from wherever I am. But let's look down here, down the left. I, I am gonna move kind of quickly and I do wanna try to show you pretty much everything that I can about how, the, how this works. This is the, the main menu system down your left side. You've got a, a header that divides some of these features into sections. So you've got style and appearance. That's where you're gonna do basically every, all the branding stuff, every, what everything looks like. You've got your content section. That's gonna be your video, your playlists, your resources. Promote and communicate is more when you are up and running and you want to communicate with your subscribers. We've got features in here for that. Activity, you want to see what's happening in my channel. How many subscribers do I have? What content are they looking at? How, is, how are my uh, statistics? Things like that, all in the activity section. Distribution, this is where you set up all your apps. You opt into your app stores. We'll look at these pieces in a minute. Um, and then the account section, so more about you know, things like related to your ODM account with us, your, um, the, all those basics. So let's start at the top. We're in a wide open channel. We've just come in. Uh, again, we got channel whatever. I'm gonna change the name. Let's say it's uh, Mary's Fitness. And uh, I can go ahead and remove this default logo and replace it with my own logo. And I'm using a Sunrise Yoga, which is just a, a, a placeholder here. Um, content support email. So there's two types of support in Odium. We have the uh, support that our team provides, which is technical support. We respond to anyone replying to a transactional email or anyone who's seeking technical support. We handle all of that as part of the service. But people may have questions about your content. They may say, um, you know, how many, when are you going to publish the next class? We won't be able to answer that for you. So we suggest you put in a content support email um, and you can enter that here. Set your time zone, um, which will help with the setting of validation for coupon codes, marketing messages, things that do use a calendar. We use your time zone for that. So I'll go ahead and save here. Um, let's move through some more of the general pieces email branding right here. You can set uh, what the email looks like. You'll see in a few places, we have the option, you've uploaded a default logo and that will be used in a, a number of places, um, but you can override that. For example, in the emails, if you'd like to use a different, um, just an icon or something a little different at the top in your emails, you can upload a different logo here if you'd like. If you would like to include the channel name underneath your logo, Maybe it's just an icon you have and you want the name to appear, you can turn on that option. And then we recommend a dark color for the email background color. And you can choose that something that's, you know, you can copy in a hex value or choose a color from this chooser, however you would like. Email configuration. Um, this is one where the technical support email, so because we are doing a subscription service, there's a bunch of transactional email that has to be generated when someone subscribes, when they sign in, um, when their renewal comes up, all of those things, they are fully branded emails, but unless you brand the email address, the emails are going to come from subscriber support at odium.io. But you may choose to um, have your own email 
address attached to your uh, channel. And this is where you would do that. It is important that that email address is only for this purpose. Don't use an email address that you also use for support somewhere else. So we would recommend something if, if you have a larger brand and you're only launching this like TV channel on our platform, maybe use something like TV support at yourdomain.com. Um, there will be a verification process that takes place so that we can send email on your behalf. We make sure that our deliverability is going to be as high as possible. So there's a, a few steps to that process. We have detailed instructions here and we'll help you to uh, if you have any questions about this. Um, social media links. So you can obviously put in links to your social accounts and those will appear on the website and apps. Um, the asset library. This is an important piece. Um, when we get to the publishing of your apps, we if we were to rebuild inside of our dashboard, all of the forms that we have to fill out when we're publishing an app, it would be pages and pages of forms. We wanna do most of that effort for you. So we're gonna ask you to fill out and give us the basics. And we'll look at that in the platform section, but there are some unique pieces of art that we need to create unique and different for each of the developer platforms. Roku, for example, when you publish a Roku channel, there's a a piece of art that is has to be in the app store listing that is a specific size and dimension. So we need as many assets from you as we can. We would like your source files to your logos. Um, if they're typical background images that you use, if you have a style guide or any of that kind of stuff that you want to give us, you would just upload it here in the asset library. Labels. So in Odium, you can change what things are called. By default, let's look at this one in particular. By default, we call playlists playlists. Uh, and a playlist, again, is just a single level container that can hold as many videos as you would like it to have in it. Think of it as a category or, you know, you could call it whatever you'd like. Um, uh, in the fitness world, you might call it, you know, workouts or something like that. Just by changing what is the singular term, what is the plural term, you can make those changes and they will um, be immediately affected for, the, for this section um, in your apps and your website. And you can change that whenever you'd like. Um, and I won't go into beyond that, but you can see that you can change these whenever you would like to. Disclaimer is an optional thing. Again, we find this for a fitness industry. If you are encouraging people to um, do workouts and potentially injure themselves, <laughs> or maybe you're teaching them to throw knives or something like that, and you really should have a disclaimer that's specific about your content, you can put it in here and enable it. You'll see this enabling feature sort of throughout some of what we have in the, in the dashboard. All right, I'm going to keep moving. SEO and sharing. Um, obviously, you can plug in um, homepage meta information, that's going to help what how your site will appear in search engines. The social might be more important this day, these days. So we um, do the optimum, um, you know, open graph type data for Facebook, um, Twitter cards data. So you, we can structure that in a, uh, exactly what you want. You can upload a custom Facebook image, things like that. And we have the specs and everything in these sections. All right, so next we have two different subsections, the website configuration and the app configuration. The website's gonna be the most comprehensive. Um, and you're gonna, again, you're gonna land uh, first on a branding section where if you would like for the website, um, you can see, well, let me, in a lot of these sections you'll see at the top, there is a uh, a feature that sort of shows you the top level, what are you working on with a few examples. And you can click through to see what different examples might be. And this is gonna be that bar on the website that is sort of the brand bar. It has your navigation in it and your logo in the upper corner. So you can choose if you would, if you have a large lockup logo as your default, but really you need a nice word mark of your logo to be in that corner, you can override the default by uploading your own logo here. Again, you can choose the format. Um, here for the website, you can upload a fav icon and then choose an accent color on the website. And we'll look at the website here in just a second so you can get a feel for what that starts to look like. Um, okay, then we have two, essentially two versions of your homepage. 
We have what we call the marketing homepage, which is what all of your non-subscribers are going to see. The people that you would like to become subscribers. You are marketing to them. And so the page is built for that purpose. As you think about this page, we'll look at, at an example in just a moment. Basically the page is panel driven, top down. These are all panels. And this order that you see them here is the order that they exist on the website. Now Odium uses essentially what we call a design framework. Um, it is not really a design tool. We're not a drag and drop WYSIWYG designer tool. We have designed a framework for a subscription video service that allows you to populate it with your own content and make a unique and branded look and feel, but the structure and the, the layout is the same. So you get to choose how, which of these panels you'd like to use and you get to populate them with your own data. So at the very top on this, you have a call to action. So we're gonna say, um, my call to action is gonna be subscribe now. And I'll say my supporting text will be, uh, you know, $14.99 a month with a three day free trial. All right, and I'll save that. And then I'll look at the top hero banner. So this is the top section of the website. You can look at a few examples of what this might look like. And I can just flip through those. And I say, okay, so I'm gonna give it a headline. Um, welcome to my channel and some supporting text. Won't you join me today? Okay, and I'll save that. And I just wanted to get that little bit of default data in. And now I'm gonna focus on what's in a really important piece as you're authoring this is you wanna be able to see what you're doing, all right? So we have this button, whenever you're in this website configuration section, there's a button here to view it. I'll go ahead and click over and you can see the site that I've started to create. My call to action is on the big button in the top, subscribe now, it's here. As I populate the page, that call to action will continue to be used. Here's that sub uh, headline to my call to action. Here's my main headline and content. And then I can customize how this panel looks as well. So I can come in here and, and choose um, do I want to choose a trailer um, for this content? Um, at this point, I think I'm going to jump over to one of our other examples so we can start to see that there's more content. This is the Sunrise Yoga sample site. Let me pull it up really quick so we can take a look at it. Pretty much have all the elements turned on here. We've uh, populated this with content in a representative fashion. It's just a demo. Um, but as I scroll down, each of these panels are things that we've turned on and populated with our own text and images. Here's that call to action text in, in here. In this panel, we also have links to all of the apps. These are all coming soon because this is just a demo. Um, but the, a user can pop this open and also understand what devices are supported. And when the links are active, link to every app right from there. Um, here's the next panel, again, with some highlighted value propositions, another opportunity for some good looking imagery. This is a featured playlist. This is something where I've offered some free video here in this panel so that people can understand the content that's inside my channel. Um, this is what we call the evaluation metrics panel. It's because it's data driven. It's showing you um, some data points um, as a way of helping you understand the helping your potential subscribers understand the, the value of the content. Um, and then this is what we call the devices marketing panel that shows your content, your images embedded into all the devices that we support. And again, showing the apps down here. So that's a good look at all the different panels. And as you move down the page, well, let's look at the uh, hero panel. Again, I was gonna say we've uploaded a feature uh, logo image We've put in a trailer and you'll see that here in the top panel, there's a watch a trailer button, which if I click on that is gonna take me right into a video watching experience to watch a, a trailer for my entire channel. Um, I've chosen for my background that I wanna use a background image. Um, we have other channels that use a background video. Let's take a moment to jump to another example. 
This is guru class. This is our ripoff of master class. Um, and uh, I will open the site so you can see what the idea of a background video for this panel. This is just a short looping video that is uh, embedded behind my content. Now, we are uh, mindful of accessibility concerns. So there is, um, you know, a, um, a level of op opacity that is put on top of the video so that the text will still pass some accessibility concerns. Sometimes, you know, people expect the video is going to look exactly like they uploaded, but we have to darken it a bit for the accessibility requirements. Um, I'll stay in guru class. Um, and you can see I can change the layout. This one, I have my text centered, but I could choose left or right for this panel. So that's kind of the way each of these panels works. We have a, very, a variety of options for each panel, and you can decide and populate it with your own content, and then you can decide to turn it on or off. Um, I turn it off, hit save, and that panel will just not display in this view. Okay, moving on again. Let me just do a quick little time check. So I'm, okay. Um, so the subscriber homepage, same idea, but this is the homepage for your subscribers. So for them, really what you wanna be marketing is, here's the new content. We've just launched this new class, this new piece of video. Um, you know, Whatever you wanna use this for, you can make announcements. You have different panels down the top. Um, a lot of times you, your subscribers are gonna wanna be able to find what they were watching previously. So including the continue watching feature is probably a great idea. Now I will point out that you can at any time jump into the subscriber view um, from the dashboard. And what this does is mock you up as a subscribed user. So server side, we sort of demo, we sort of create a subscriber on the fly so you can see what this is gonna look like for your subscribers. So here we're featuring a new playlist uh, as, for the subscribers and featuring a particular video up at the top. All right, so I don't wanna get lost. Uh, whoops, just closed my dashboard. <laughs> Okay, um, moving along quickly, apps, our current apps, we are in the 2.0 world of our apps. We have a 3.0 design that is coming soon that has a very similar panel-based approach that you just saw in the website config. The apps currently that are live and published are a little simpler. They are really designed to get you into the content, simple home, playlists, sign-in experience. You can configure the branding here. We have a little bit of a live preview. So as you're changing things, you get to see what it would sort of look like. Um, here's just drops a background color. I can override the logo. Maybe I only wanna show the logo. Um, there's a few options like that for configuring the design of the app. Um, and then you have some basic control over what's on the marketing home screen and what's on the subscriber home screen. Now remember the apps are not just mobile phones or tablets, they're also TV devices. So everything's gonna be laid out differently across each of the devices. I better keep moving here because we've got a lot to cover. Here's the videos section. Um, we've got a bunch of sample content in here. Each of the videos can be um, edited at any time from the video details, um, changing the trailer or the, uh, yeah, you can add a trailer, you can set the thumbnail, you can see which series or playlists that it is in. Um, you get video-based analytics um, for this one video. If you wanna see how many times has it been viewed, um, what is the average watch time, all of that sort of thing. Obviously this is just demo content, so there's not a lot. And then resources. So I can attach something from my resource library to this video. So now I've just added this PDF worksheet. So as people are looking at this video, there will be a link to that PDF worksheet on the front end. So series here, um, these are again, the playlists in this publisher, we've uh, decided to call them series. And each one can be edited whenever you would like uh, with the different versions of the cover art for the different um, outputs that we have, TV devices and use more of a square image. Then you can manage the videos that are in this playlist by hitting add and basically you just drag and drop 
uh, videos right into a playlist. Hit save and it's live immediately. Um, here's that resource library where you can upload PDFs or add external links whenever you would like. And that's pretty much the content section. So if I pop over here to Guru class, I can see, okay, I've added my video. I've got all these green check marks. I'm moving along pretty, pretty well here. Um, let's talk about the major step of preparing for distribution. This is the platforms section. In your navigation, it's over here in the distribution section. We have a little bit of description of how all this works. And here are the four app stores and the Odium website. These are basically the platforms that we publish to. Um, when you first get in here, I'm gonna jump back over to our Mary's Fitness, which is our brand new one. You'll see that the app stores are all inactive. And it was I, I can click into each one and it will explain to me what are the major steps of getting active on the Apple App Store. And I have an opt-in option. So assuming I want to publish to Apple, I would click opt-in. If I did not want to, I would click opt-out. I'm gonna go ahead and click the opt-in just so we can see where we go from here. It says I've opted in. Now I got this little uh, alert that shows the status. I can click here to Apple. It says requested awaiting access. Basically, we've been notified you wanna publish here and we are waiting for you to complete the process and inviting us to have access to your developer account. Once we have that access, we've confirmed we can publish. We will update this status and you'll see it updated here as active. From time to time, all of the app stores will have new terms and conditions that you have to agree to for us to be able to continue to publish. When that happens, you're, for us in Odium, those app stores will fall into a needs attention status and we'll need you to take some action or else we will be blocked from continuing to maintain your applications. Um, you get to configure the app title, the name, the subtitle, the description, all of these elements. These are kind of the basic set of things that we need from you to proceed with publishing your apps. Talk about subscription plans for a moment, also in the distribution section. Um, the reality here is people can subscribe on your website and they can also subscribe with in-app purchases on the apps. So here are the subscription plans. You can create them here, give them a name. What would you like it to look like on the credit card statement? We give some examples here of what this should be. So let's say a monthly of $9.99. Um, just so you know, if you put in a round number like $10 here, when we go to submit the app to Apple, they don't have that option. The option is $9.99. Again, I'm just talking USD at the moment. Um, and so we'll have to either adjust and we'll reach out to you dis to discuss this. Do you want to adjust your price down on the website or leave it at, at around $10? but on Apple, they'll be at 9.99. You may choose a 50 cent increment that doesn't exist on one of the platforms and we will reach out to you to discuss. It's kind of a good example, again, of how we are your partner in this process, helping you to navigate the world of publishing your apps um, here on, on, uh, on all these distribution platforms. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump back here to uh, push notifications. We can't really look at this on this one. Maybe I can on Sunrise. Let's see. I think actually all of these are disabled because I don't have actually apps to push to, but you can create a push notification. You can link a push notification to specific content. Push will only work for mobile apps and tablets on Apple, Google, Amazon, um, but you can send a push notification like new course launched click here to view. And if they tap on that push notification, it will open the app and go straight to that content. Um, and you can choose who the audience is for uh, those as well. Same with email communications. You can send an email out um, in that branded template. Um, we have a rich text editor. We'll kind of look at that in the email automation section. We have uh, some basic automation right now. Um, this is a feature I'm sure Sumo Lings are gonna to want to see expand, we do as well. Right now, we just have a welcome email that you can compose that welcomes a new subscriber when they start a free trial with you. Um, you can compose it here in a rich text editor. You can send yourself a test at any time so you see exactly what it looks like. 
um, and you enable the welcome email and it happens at the moment of sign up. The days after sign up is something you could say, all right, three days after sign up, I'd like to send an email reminding people that they can also download the Apple TV or Roku app and um, that they may not have done that yet sort of enhancing and reminding them of the value of the platform overall. Um, okay, so coupon codes. We have a pretty robust coupon code system. You can create coupons of almost any type, um, free for a year if you want it, free forever if you really wanted to. You can provide a coupon 50% off uh, for the first three months, $5 off for the first year, however you'd like it. Coupon codes, only work on your website. Apple, Google, they don't have a coupon code system that we can plug into. Um, so that is, that's where, the, that's where it uh, stops here is uh, coupon codes, but they can be almost anything you want them to be on the website. And ultimately, you know, revenue wise, you probably want people to subscribe on your website because the only, um, you're gonna have transaction fees, just credit card transaction fees, but the um, Apple and the app stores will take 20 to 30% as their cut for your in-app purchases. And that is nothing we can do anything about. Um, so you probably wanna drive people primarily to subscribe on the website. Promotional banners, we'll see one on Sunrise Yoga. It's just these banners across the top. The opportunity here is to run promotions uh, you know, make a discount or a coupon that you want everyone to be aware of on your website uh, to help uh, motivate signups. That's what promotional banners are used for. FAQs, there are a bunch of FAQs that we uh, publish by default, but if you wanted to add your own that are more related to your content, um, you can add them as well whenever you'd like. Um, activity, I feel like I'm probably running uh, out of time, we want to get to Q&A. So these are some basic, uh, some stats. You can run reports here. Um, I'm not going to have any really meaningful data here, but I'll just click this. It does take a moment to compile um, on some of these reporting elements, but you can get a good sense of at least what it would look like. Um, let's see if I can get that. There's no data in here. Okay. Um, so it's comparing the, the term, the, these, uh, this is about a 30 day window with the previous window. It's showing me top videos. What were the previous top videos in the previous period, total number of plays, things like that in this report. In the content performance report, you're gonna see more like, um, I wanna compare this video to this video or a whole playlist. I wanna see what people are watching most. Um, and you can sort of dynamically run those reports. Um, current month financials. So at the, uh, I won't go into great detail here, but at the end of each month, basically as your subscribers pay into the system to subscribe, um, that money is flowing into the Odium system. At the end of the month, we will um, tally that all up as well as your fees uh, that are potentially due for video storage or for per subscriber fees, um, transaction fees. Uh, we'll also report back to you people who subscribed on the um, developer platforms and show you that whole snapshot on a single statement. And then we pay out within 30 days of the end of the month, uh, the net revenue to you. Um, the subscriber list. So you can see your subscribers. I don't know that any of these have actual subscribers. I don't think so. But obviously you can very quickly see how many active paid do I have? How many active free trials? And it will just sort the list below um, and you can click into each one. You can see devices, they have active things like that. We don't have like per user viewing statistics. You can't see this person watched this video on this date. Um, we don't have that at the moment. We, we're focused more on the, the library of content and you understanding how that's being viewed as a whole thing. Um, so that's that. And then in the account section, um, I'll just point out a couple of things. Um, API keys, we do have a Zapier integration, so you can connect your data to whatever tool um, of the, what, 2,000 plus other apps that Zapier supports to send data and sync it up um, with, that, with those tools. There's a number of events in there. And then managers, you can invite as many managers as you would like. Um, 
it is a single level of role. Everyone has the same permissions at this time. This is certainly a feature we know will need some expansion over time, role-based. Uh, you may have someone that you just want to allow to manage video or just the, you know, some elements like that and not have access to some of the other parts of the system. Uh, right now, this is full access for all managers, just so you know what that is. Um, okay, I'm gonna take a quick look at some apps. Um, Definitely running out on time. Okay, so uh, this is the Apple TV simulator, but just so you can see what this looks like. Um, this is Positively TV, one of our publishers, um, a dog trainer, celebrity dog trainer. It used to be on um, It's Me or the Dog in the UK for a long time. Um, and here's some of her content. You can see she organized it by series. Um, can click in here to a series like dog training. Um, she's turned on one of our filtering features. So um, these are these videos are all tagged with these different tags and I can filter and say, I just wanna see the health and wellness videos in this playlist. Um, and then I can launch into them and play them. Um, and then the sign in on TV, we activate like most of the others do where um, pull up your mobile phone, type in this URL, much easier to type on a mobile phone or a computer, enter that activation code and you're in. Um, you can also subscribe directly through the Apple TV using Apple in-app purchases. Um, so that's a quick look at the Apple TV app. I will also very quickly show um, the um, iOS app. Okay. So here's uh, again, Positively TV, since we were looking at that, you can see it's a similar look and feel. All of these playlists, here's the, they call them series. Um, you can see what that looks like. Maybe I'll look at one other here. This is Purple at Homes, Purple Yoga. Oh, not supported. Having trouble with Zoom. Um, some, sometimes apps don't screen share. So sorry, I guess I will stop there so I can get back to my other slides. Okay, a couple of sort of details that I wanted to just quickly explain, details that are worth considering. Pricing. We get asked a lot, how do I set my pricing? How do I know what people are going to pay for my subscription service? And we can certainly help with some guidance, but honestly, it's going to be really specific to you and what you're offering. What we suggest is consider what is the equivalency for your buyer. Again, in the world of fitness, the equivalency of a yoga studio selling an online service is I'm gonna go pay 15 or $20 to take a single class. So 15 or $20 a month to get an entire library of the teachers that I love is a pretty fair price. The equivalency is high. If I'm selling entertainment content, short form uh, you know, webisodes or something like that, well, the equivalency is, boy, there's a lot of that on YouTube and there's certainly Netflix, Hulu, and those guys that are charging anywhere from seven to fifteen dollars a month so you have to figure out what is the comparison what how will my buyer think of the value um, so we've one of the things that we've been asked a bunch is can I change my pricing later um, yes and no you can but it's not going to be easy for you or for us <laughs> um, the app stores so as I showed in the pricing section, you'll, you'll submit your plans, but then we will go and publish and create plans in each of the developer programs for you. Um, and those, so they're all managed individually. Um, so that's a challenge. We also, if you're gonna change pricing, think about when Netflix changes its pricing, the communication that they have to do, it's a change management issue. Um, who's getting a new price and why? Um, it's, it's cumbersome and challenging to do and moving users from one type of pricing plan to another is also challenging. So we'd, we'd encourage you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about how do I set my pricing today? And so we would encourage aim high and use coupons. So if you think eventually, eventually I wanna to get to a $12 a month fee, but I think at, at launch, I'd like to get as many people onboarded at five bucks a month as possible. 
we'd encourage set it at 12, make a promo banner and give a coupon to get it down to that five so that you get as many people on board as possible. Then you can always go up. You've also set the value in their mind at a certain thing, but you've discounted the price. Um, that's a really good strategy. Choosing when to launch. This is a big one. So as you can see, you put a bunch of content in the dashboard and you choose a moment when you're gonna hit that launch button. And you are to a degree, we'd like you to understand that you are passing a point of no return when you do that. You are choosing what I've put in here is ready to launch. Now, the first thing I would say is you really need to have reached a definition of what we would call a viable paid subscription service. One video is not gonna get it done. And that's not just because Odium is going to challenge you on, is that a viable? <laughs> we, we will, but it is, we would not have success submitting an app to Apple with one video charging any price. Um, they would push it back and say, this is not viable. It's not real. Um, that it, you, you can't launch something that's a demo or a beta. They want to see it fully viable as a product. And so do we. So keep that in mind. When, when you hit that, uh, when, you're, when you're ready to hit launch, we really want you to have thought about, do you have enough in there? There's two big factors for a buyer. The first is the library of content I'm going to get the moment I sign up. That has to be worth the price I'm about to give you. And the second is over time, what's the plan? How much new content are you gonna publish month by month? Um, what new content is gonna be in there? And what, how's this gonna grow so that it's worth my monthly fee? So think about both of those factors as you're designing your content plan. Um, and we wanted to point out very clearly, at that point of no return, you've got three buckets now. You've got things that are now locked that we really can't change. You've got things that you can change, but they're not going to be easy to change, difficult. Then you've got things you could change at any time, day or night. So in the locked category is things like the name of your app. We can't go into the app store and change the name of your app descriptions, keywords, those are just not changeable. They're locked. You have launched a subscription service that is called X, whatever it is. Um, so those things you really need to be firm on. Things you can change. We've talked about subscription pricing plans. Yes, we can, but it's going to be a challenge. Your custom domain, we could change it, but again, you got to manage that. That's not going to be terribly easy. There are some things like the screenshots that we will create for you we can change those. Some of that artwork, like the big banners that show up in Apple TV, um, we can change those. But again, it's a, it would be a manual thing we'd have to do. 24-7, you can get into the dashboard, upload new videos. They'll instantly be in the app. Create a new playlist instantly in the app for all your subscribers. Change the content instantly in all the apps. Resource links, instant. All of that is a dynamic and live connectivity. So all that's content that you're managing in the dashboard. Think of that as like, a real broadcasting at all times. And let's talk quickly about what's ahead. Um, obviously, I've given you a lot. We have a brand new design, the 3.0 design that will hit all of our mobile apps, tablets, and TV. It will look much more like what the website looks like today. We're very excited. Along with that, we'll launch our live feature. Um, that is going to be a, a very exciting element as well. You can broadcast live. There will be a bit of interactivity in the form of like a Q&A where uh, your viewers can submit a question and you can answer it in real time. Um, but we're not trying to be a social platform. There won't be chat or any of those things. This is, this is a thing you're going to watch on your television. Always keep that in mind. That's what the platform is really for. Um, also, uh, we have autoplay playlists coming. So you can start a playlist and like you would watch a series, you know, a binge watch a, a TV series and the next episode just starts, that's coming. Tiered plans, right now um, our, our product works like Netflix does. One subscription plan, you can have different pricing plans, but it's one subscription, gets you access to everything. In a future world, we imagine that we will have uh, the light subscription gets you this amount of content, the max subscription gets you more content, some flexible options for you. Um, that is on the roadmap. I can't give you a timeline on any of these things, but it is in our plans. And then TVOD, which stands for Transactional Video On Demand. I want everyone to think of our platform as SVOD. We are Subscription Video On Demand. We are that 
and we're narrowly focused on being that. We are also not AVOD. We are not advertising driven. We are subscription driven. That said, we do see a model like Disney Plus just recently did with Mulan, where their existing subscribers could pay an additional fee to get access to Mulan. Um, and it goes into their subscription. But to keep access, you have to keep being a subscriber. We will have that type of premium add-on. So if you're a yoga studio and you have all your classes, maybe you sell a teacher training course that is an add-on to your subscribers, um, that type of thing. Lots of models. I'm sure you will all think of things we haven't thought of, but that's a feature that's ahead. Okay, I've hit the end. I've talked a lot and it's late. I'm sorry, but let's uh, open it up. <laughs> what do we do next, Lindsay? <laughs> Yeah, no, this was great. Thank you so much for walking us through all of that. We are going to take your questions now, Sumo Lang. So if you would like to send in any more, you can go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and just start at the top and work my way through. Um, we do, Courtney has done an amazing job of getting a lot of your questions done. Uh, so we're just going to go through the ones that, that haven't been answered. Uh, so how does each channel link to a domain or subdomain? Um, okay, so in the dashboard, um, by default, when a new channel is created, we give you an Odium subdomain. It's pretty random, you know, 54321.odium.io, and you can preview the site there. You could potentially use that if you wanted, but we assume our publishers are going to want their own domain name. Um, we have an article on our help desks that des describes exactly what you do. You would go to your domain name provider create a CNAME record pointed at uh, its webclient.odium.io. Um, if you're using Cloudflare, make sure you don't have Cloudflare on because we, we need to make sure that the traffic is coming at us and we can't see that if Cloudflare is on. Um, and then you go into the dashboard in the, in the platforms section and there's a place to type in that domain, hit verify, we'll check the records, submit and you're off and running. Um, one thing I did want to note, because we've had some of our newer publishers have come in and created that and they can't see the site and they're confused. We don't launch anything until you finish the launch checklist. So even if you if you got the green check thumbs up, you know, this domain is connected, you're good. But when you go to that domain, it's not going to show the site. We are working on having more like a placeholder that says this site coming soon. Right now, you just don't get anything. Um, so just to clarify that. Great. Thank you. Uh, what is the payment processor option for a channel? Great question. Um, so because we are a full service subscription solution and we've built all the little subtle nuances that go on with that, we really control the entire flow. So we don't have the ability for you to plug in your own payment processor. We on the back end, we do use Stripe. Um, and there are a couple of things I would just bring to uh, your attention. Subscription products are um, an, an item of scrutiny in the world right now because so many of them have prop, cropped up. Um, for the credit card companies like Visa just announced a whole set of requirements around anyone providing a subscription service, what they must do. It's related to data that's on the screen when they sign up, um, how much communication there is prior to a free trial ending and when that communication arrives. A lot of requirements like that. We own that, we, we do all of that. That's one piece. So, and we expect to own that now and into the future. So that's part of why we have to kind of own the whole life cycle. The second is just if a subscriber emails us for tech support and says, I got charged the wrong amount or whatever, we have to have full visibility and control over the payment process. So, um, so we don't have an option for using your own payment gateway. It, it, we just don't. Thanks. No, that's uh, crystal clear. That makes sense. What are the international features that you're planning on adding? Great question. Um, and I'll be honest that um, we, we have really been focused on the US. Um, and so what we have today on the website it, it charges in US dollars um, if you sign up on the website. <clears throat> um, and we don't have um, localization in the web product or the app product right now. You certainly can with the text um, dashboard editing capabilities, you could paste in all your language, uh, all your text in a different language. 
um, and that would be fine, that works. But there's a few core elements like the label for home is gonna say home, <laughs> um, things like that. Um, one of the things that does work quite well now is, and we do have certainly publishers now who have a client base that is worldwide, their publishers are, are able to go to Apple, for example, download the app and use in-app purchases to pay in their local currency. And that's one of the things that you get with Apple and with Google and those guys is they, they have that piece all built in and it works. Um, I can't say today exactly what we will have in the future. Um, I feel like I, would, I don't want to misrepresent to any of you that are international about what we're building. We, we have not decided for sure. We certainly are discussing the idea of being able to create at least subscription plans in different currencies. Um, but it has a cascading impact because the way we manage the revenue and everything that comes into the system is all in US dollars right now. So as you can imagine, it gets complex quickly. Um, and so uh, I, we, are, we are discussing it and planning, but as of now, I wouldn't want anyone to purchase the product thinking that it's definitely going to be fully international capable um, at that level anytime soon. We have a lot on our roadmap to complete with the, all the redesign and everything I just showed you. Great, thank you. Uh, does the 1% international fee apply to subscribers from Canada? I don't know the answer to that. Um, this is a Stripe thing. So uh, you, you or I could very quickly jump on stripe.com and look and see if that factors in. Uh, and I can look up that answer and, and answer back. I don't actually know. I, I would assume cool. it does, but I'm not sure. Um, question as an agency, let's say I set up a service to make a client an Odium app and create content for slash with them. What happens if they don't pay slash I want to remove them as a client? So the scenario is, I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Yeah. So this is an agency. They want to help, uh, their client set up the Odium app, help them create content for slash with them. But what happens if this client doesn't pay or uh, the agency wants to remove the client um, as a client? Got it. Um, yeah, it's an interesting scenario. Um, you certainly could come to us and say, this channel needs to be shut down um, and we can go in and um, assuming we still have access now, when you invite us to your developer account, you can also kick us out. <laughs> or if you invite us to someone else's developer account, they could kick us out. Then we wouldn't really have the ability to remove that app. Um, but if we shut off the server side, obviously the app kind of dies at that point. Um, so I guess that's, I'm not sure how else to answer it, except to say that, yes, you could certainly pull the app, uh, pull a channel, you know, just discontinue it. Part of the challenge there, of course, is like if you have existing paying subscribers is, um, that you've that are you know you want to pull it on the fifteenth, but you've got people who've subscribed for a year. Um, what do we do with that? And so that's kind of why we are here as a team to help you navigate some tricky scenarios like that. I don't have a you know a more straightforward answer than that. That's cool. Maybe I'll take uh, this moment. There's someone had asked, uh, a few people had asked about the Powered by Odium and where that appears. I think it might be re related to this topic. Um, I didn't show it in specifics um, and maybe I should really quick. Um, let's see. Yeah, we, we do have um, this. I'll show you the um, Apple TV simulator again so we can just see where basically what it looks like. If you see at the bottom of the screen, powered by Odium with an app version number, that's as prominent as we get um, anywhere in the platform on the apps, um, anywhere is we just show that on that one like account screen, sign in or on your account screen, um, just a, that little bug. So I just wanted to clarify that. Great, thanks. Um, our next question, uh, will your support team work with us during an instance when most, if not all of our subscribers log in and simultaneously watch a highly anticipated video? Would you need advance notice? Uh, 
that would be appreciated. Um, I am not at all concerned on our video infrastructure um, for something like that, but potentially since that's a high volume of users that could uh, request support at one time, it would be fantastic for you to give us a heads up. We've been doing live events for a long time, so we know that uh, those can be chaotic moments and or campaigns, you know, for clients that yeah. we've that we've run. Any huge volume is always great to let your providers know, for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a follow up to kind of what we're talking about before. What white labeling is there? Okay, yes. Um, I mean, basically what you saw, the platform is fully white labeled except for that little powered by Odium. And there's a few other places, I don't, I don't wanna misrepresent again, there's a few other places where someone could see or understand that Odium exists. One is like the terms and conditions links um, mm -hmm. are on our domain. Um, we are looking at whether we should switch that so that they're um, under underneath the white label um, domain name wouldn't be a difficult thing to do, but currently that is where they sit. Um, there's things that you know you can like you know put that email alias on top so no one sees that. You can put your own custom domain on everything. Um, then basically everything is fully fully white labeled, we publish the apps under your, your name. So you're going to create, you know, Joe's business LLC on, <laughs> on the app store and publish the app there. Odium's name won't be seen in that process at all. Credit cards, um, really every example I've ever seen of a credit card statement from an Odium subscriber charge, it lists only the plan name, which you get to type in. Um, but because the Stripe account is technically owned by Odium, there is a possibility, depending on the credit card company, that the word Odium might appear there alongside also, you know, my channel subscription. Um, so that is, I, I, yeah, I, I don't have an example of that, but I, uh, I believe it is a possible thing that could be seen by a user. Cool. But I think that's it. Can you show a PDF and or link resource what that looks like on a video page or playlist page? Yes, I can. Let's um, jump over here. Let's see. Um, log out of this one. Oh wait, maybe I shouldn't have logged out. <laughs> um, Okay, yeah, so here's, uh, here's a course called Fancy Writing with Victor Button Down, and here's a PDF worksheet right here. So um, that's what, that's where a, a link would, would appear. Um, this one actually, they are, you have to be signed in to download these pieces. You, they're not for the public, but so another reason to start your free trial. Um, and then if you had multiple, that opens up into um, a, a selection list. Um, that's, that's where it appears. Great. So this question was obviously referring to something that you were doing at the time. And so I don't know what you were doing at this exact time, but we're going to use like some context clues. The question is, how do we do what was just shown as the activate site? Hmm. You got it, Courtney. I'm going to speak, which is good because <laughs> my fingers are numb. Um, <laughs> I think this person is actually just I'm guessing they're actually asking, what if we just want to show the active website and perhaps not the apps is what I'm getting. I didn't, I didn't really understand that. And that's why I watched it your way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so potentially just launching the website and not the apps is the question. So which that's what you're thinking court. Okay. Um, yes. So in the platform section of the dashboard, you could opt out of all of the apps and only have the website. That's entirely up to you. Also at the time of launch, because the app process can take, you know, a few weeks, I like Roku review right now is ridiculously long. <laughs> um, Google play actually too is very slow. Amazon's like super fast. So is Apple, but um, those change all the time. So you may decide, Hey, I'm ready for my website to go live. So when you hit launch, we send you a communication that gives you all the next steps and says, hey, if you want your website to go live now while the apps are being published, just let us know and we can launch it at that point. 
Excellent. Uh, what video quality is supported? Um, so everything we don't we don't have 4K support. So below that, so 1080p and below HD quality across the platform. Um, but we are not we don't support 4K. I imagine in the future we will we will as that. Um, but as you can imagine, the <laughs> it's an increasing magnitude of uh, complexity for all of the apps that we have. Sure. All right, we pay monthly fees for each publisher, correct? Are there any other fees aside from storage? Um, so we just have three sort of fee things to consider. Video storage, which $4 an hour per month, but you get 10 hours included with the AppSumo code. Um, the per subscriber fees. So, um, in a month, if you had 100 subscribers paying you 10 bucks a month, so you're getting $1,000 in revenue, each of those active subscribers that are active at midnight on the last day of the month, if there were 100 active at that time, that would generate your monthly fee for that month of $100, $1 per subscriber for that month. Um, we wrote about this again on the help desk. There's some articles that describe some scenarios in here as well. And I, I get it, this is tricky and complicated. We've tried our best to just be as fair as possible in how we calculate this. So storage, we actually calculate every day. So if you put in 10 hours of video on the last day of the month, we're not gonna charge you for the whole month. It's only, you know, it's an average, right? But with, per, with subscribers, we understand you may have free trial subscribers that sign up on the, first day of the month and don't convert to a paying subscriber and maybe your trial is seven days so they're gone on the seventh day of the month they wouldn't be counted because they wouldn't be active on the 30th or the 31st of the month but you may have some free trials that do start on the 28th and they are active so we think you know if you have a seven day free trial you could imagine that about 25 percent of your free trials are actually going to be active at that one moment when we calculate but it's the same thing with uh, someone who's a subscriber for a month. If they start on November 15th and then they cancel and end on December 15th, we're not going to, even though they were active in both months, you're only going to get charged the one time when they were active at the end of the month. Um, so that, those are those two components. And then the only other component that Odium charges for is honestly just a reimbursement component of transaction fees for credit card charges. So if someone's on a monthly subscription, every month there's a charge, $9.99. So you, there's the 2.9% plus 30 cents. That just kind of is a pass through for us to Stripe. Um, if they're an annual subscriber, then there's only one charge in a year. Um, and you would only get, you know, the transaction fees are just related to credit card charges. That's it. Um, I do want to say live, since a lot of people are anticipating live, it will have associated costs of, of some sort, and it's going to be based on minutes um, of active viewing by your people watching your live event. Um, we definitely anticipate there will be a certain amount of usage that will be included for all our publishers. We want people to use the feature um, because we think it's going to be really powerful. But at the same time, a, a publisher who uses it every day for hours and hours will generate um, a lot more um, costs. That, and that's just a reality. So there will be like a metered usage beyond a certain threshold. Um, and I, I don't have the details of that. I don't, I, I, it's one of those things I don't want it to be misrepresented that that's just going to be free <laughs> um, because it, it can't be. But that's, yeah. Understood. Thank you. Um, so a couple clarification points. Um, do all subscribers currently pay in USD? Um, if they sign up on the website, then they do pay in USD. And that can be a challenge for an international card because not all of them, I, I, I think especially in some countries, um, credit cards have to be enabled for subscription services. Sometimes this, because it's a subscription service, they can get declined. Um, and then also being able to charge in USD can be a decline issue for some international cards. But um, that's the website answer. But the apps themselves, if a person subscribes using Apple in-app purchases, then they can pay in any of the currencies 
And that's actually what the options will show because Apple will know where that phone is and who you are and charge you in, you know, uh, Malaysian ringgit if uh, that's what you, where you are. <laughs> cool. Uh, how, oh wait, how do you handle taxation? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, we don't, to be honest. Um, we uh, are in the process of writing up clear documentation for what our publishers should consider in regards to taxation. This is really an issue right now that um, we don't technically handle everyone. We don't charge sales tax on people who subscribe through our web product, but um, you may have to uh, handle that as a business, what you're doing with that. Um, and so we will give you reports uh, of all the people who bought your product and where they were located. And it will be up to you to determine if you owe sales tax on those things or not. Um, it's, a, it's an evolving issue and certainly one that we take very seriously. So I would anticipate as we grow I guess as an example, Vimeo OTT did exactly what we're doing <laughs> for years. And just in the last few months, they have announced a switch where they will be charging tax um, to the publisher and doing the tax reporting and all that for their product. Uh, they've reached a size, I think, that they kind of have to do that. I that's a lawyer question and one that I'm working on, but the, the answer today is, is it's kind of up to you to handle tax. Great, all right. Um, we just have a couple more questions here, Sumo Langs. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get through all of them, but we're gonna go through some of the more, you know, frequently asked questions. Um, how, are we pay uh, how are we paid by Odium? Great, so at the end of the month, um, we issue a financial statement um, where we have line items for all the different fees um, or you know, all the revenue, first of all, <laughs> everything that's come in that we owe you. Um, and then the fees that get deducted out of that and it comes out to a net value. You'll see that statement published within about the first week of the month after the close of the month. And then within 30 days of the close of the previous month, we will pay out currently we pay out by mailing a check or by doing an ACH deposit. And you can um, configure that on your billing details page in the dashboard. Um, we've been asked a lot about international. If you are an international company, how can I get you paid? Um, and we are looking into that. I don't have an answer for that question, but obviously I think we are gonna have some international publishers and we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, that's. Yeah, I don't have I don't have the technical answer yet, but we will we will have a solution. No worries. Um, can we do discounted trials? Like instead of a free trial, a discounted. That's my trial? guess. Yes. So a, <clears throat> um, a second question that came after that from another person was, could we charge like a dollar for a three day trial, and then that way, if it would cover the fee if they hit the end of the month. Yeah, um, so I think what you would want to do in that scenario is um, probably not have a free trial, but instead give a coupon for the first period of time um, where you could drop that first month to whatever you wanted it to be so they could cancel after that without any, but they wouldn't have a free trial. The free trial is kind of a thing. It's not really, there is no really version of a paid trial. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the only answer that I have for that. Cool. Um, all right. So Sumo Langs, we are about 15 minutes over. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask just one last question, and then we will wrap it up. Uh, do you offer support during the build process? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I guess I, I, I assume that question means to you, <laughs> to our publishers, yeah. um, we're always available. So we use intercom and our whole team is, um, engaged and helping our publishers. I guess I would say we know this is really complicated and that understanding how you get from the beginning to getting ready to launch. And then what is the launch process? Um, we are here. 
certainly, um, maybe the question was actually about the app review process. We own that entirely. So I can say we, as a development team and, and as the team behind Odium, we have submitted a countless number of apps and gone through app review so many times their apps will get rejected. And it's just, even though we have so many apps that are live and have passed uh, review, exact same app, just with a different color scheme will get rejected by some reviewer at Apple and we'll respond and deal with it. And, and that's, that's on us to help you get through there. Now, if there's a content problem, if Apple says this content is not acceptable for the app store, then there's not much we can do about that. But if it's a technical one, um, we handle that for sure. And that includes getting you launched. I mean, there's a lot that, that we're asking you to put into the dashboard and um, complete and, and work your way through. But when it comes time to really compile and submit your apps, there are humans behind the system for sure. Right. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think that's a great note to end on. Sumo links, if you have not already, you can redeem your codes at appsumo.com slash odium. It is starting at $99 for a lifetime deal. And of course, this is backed by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can go ahead, get set up, play around with it, see how this is working for you, and soon launch your own app. That's very exciting. I really, uh, a little known secret is that I write the video scripts for these deals. And so I get to see uh, these products before y'all do. And I really loved this one right out the gate. I thought that this was a very interesting, cool tool. That's like, I can't believe that we got you guys. So I'm really excited to have y'all here in the we store. Sumo links. If, if, you, uh, if you're also loving this tool, you can go ahead and let us know. We do love to read your reviews on the deal page. Uh, and of course, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to their support and reach out to the deal page. And I'm sure that they will answer them for you. All right. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, Courtney, uh, for answering all the questions and walking us through everything. I hope you'll have a good one. Thanks so much.